Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be episode one of the Opal Mancona series. Um, so I'll just talk to you a little bit about this car. Um, so this is actually an Opal Manta hatchback. Um, this was a European import many, many years ago. Um, quite a low mileage shell. Uh, really solid when it came to the UK. Now this was actually built by a friend of my brother's. Um, sort of late 90s, early 2000s, um, and what they've done is convert the front end to an Opel Ascona. So the back end up to sort of the doors here is a Manta hatchback, and then from the doors forward it's all Ascona, hence they call it a Mancona. You might notice there, there's another one next to it. Uh, these two cars was actually built together um, pretty much side by side back in the day. Uh, my brother was building that one, his friend was building this one. My brother actually gave me that probably 10 or 11 years ago now, possibly longer, maybe even 12 years ago. And that was actually, I carried on that build and that was actually the first car, well the first Manta I restored, um, which sort of gave me the bug, which I still carry today. So just walk you around the car a little bit, uh, I'm sure you a little bit about it. It is something a little bit different. I um, thought you guys would be interested in this on the channel. Um, we're not going to be going to many extremes with this one. We're just going to sort of get it running, get it solid, uh, tidy it up a bit, and then it will probably be going up for sale. Um, so, as you'll notice here, it's got some wheel arches that aren't original. Now, these are actually off a Mark One Astra, um, but they're sort of opposite. So, this on the Astra would be on the passenger side front, but they just so happen once you cross them over onto a Manta and put them on opposites, the fit pretty well. A uh, little bit of work needed but not an awful lot. Um, the arches are trimmed out a little bit, rolled um, and then sort of slightly tubbed and bonded in. A uh, bit of fiberglass on the inside to uh, make them fit as well as possible. You notice this car has got sealed rear quarters in it, uh, non-opening. They are quite a rare piece of glass to find in a hatchback and you'll also notice it's pretty wet. And the reason it's pretty wet is because it's been sat out there for a month or so uh, whilst I've been getting on with this build. So, we'll um, walk you around a little bit more. Sorry about that, just had a truck coming past. Uh, the side skirts again are off a Martin Astra and made to fit. Uh, you'll note there the mantamorphine.com. That was actually a website again, my brother and his friend made many, many years ago um, when the internet was quite a new thing. That website's no longer up and running. Um, that was for sort of custom stuff for mantas, clear indicators, rear disc conversions, um, white dials, some other bits and bobs that they used to do. Um, we've got the Engelman mirrors on it, which we're going to be leaving on. They are genuine Engelmans as well, not the copies. Um, this fuel cap filler cap will be coming off because I think it looks absolutely ridiculous. No idea why they thought that would look good, but again, it's a late 90s, early 2000s build, so maybe back then it was the thing to have. Um, the wheels are MIM, BMW MIM, which I think suit the car really well. Same again with the front arch bonded into suit and you'll notice there the front wings, front panel and all the front end is a Skona. These lights, these twin lights for the Skonas are actually really really rare. Um, these are genuine Hampshire bezels. I think they suit the car really well um, but what we did when we built this car um, we actually sat these lenses further back so we extended the back of the bezels with some tubing and we made them light lenses sit further back so it didn't look as goggly eyed. Uh, which suited the car a hell of a lot better. Now uh, coming into the engine bay, you'll notice that that is not standard at all. So what we have there is a Rover V8, which has been specced up quite heavily. Um, I believe this actually came out of a TVR. Now I don't know how true that is, uh, but they're all based on the same or similar thing anyway, as far as I'm aware. Um, but this has had a hell of a lot of uh, work done to it to race spec it up. It's all lightened and balanced. Um, it's got um, light and crank, balanced crank, light and flywheel, 
Um, it's got big valve heads, it's had a lot of port work, it's got custom headers. Um, it's also got big cams, big racing cams in it. You'll notice it's got quad Delortro carbs on it. Now this thing sounds like the devil when it starts up. It's probably the only way to describe it. It sounds absolutely amazing, this car, when it's running. Um, this exhaust system that's on it was custom made and cost an absolute fortune um, back in the day. I think it was actually a Tony Law exhaust, if I remember rightly. Um, it's also semi-dry sumped. It's got rear disc conversion, it's got a full set of billies, it's got competition springs, it's lowered. Um, there's quite a lot going on on this car. It's quite solid for the most part. It does want some light bits of restoration work. Um, there is a hole in the boot floor, which I'll try and show you, which I only noticed when I removed the carpets and all of the fuel tank, all that kind of stuff under there. Uh, fuel tank's actually still in the boot, but we might not be able to see it. I took the fuel tank out to start restoring it because it's been in the car, under the car for such a long time that it's rotten, which is quite a common thing on these Manta hatchbacks. I'm just struggling trying to get this tank out of the boot here. So hold on, I'll just pause this one sec, I'll get this tank out. Alright, there we go, sorry about that. So yeah, we've got the fuel tank took off the car. Um, because they do rot quite badly because on the hatchback they're actually under the car whereas in the coupe they're in the boot um, so these do rot quite badly and all the um, breather pipes and everything completely corroded off so I've started repiping it um, I'm going to obviously restore this tank, clean it all out get it coated, get it painted there's a small hole there that needs some weld so we'll get that sorted and when we took the tank out and all the spare wheel and everything else, we noticed this hole in the floor, which is, to be fair, as far as mantas go, it's not that bad. Um, compared to some of the other stuff which you've seen me do, I'm sure you'll agree, that's pretty simple for me to do. So, that's not too bad. Um, there's another couple of small holes peering around here, so we'll cut all this out and we'll make that all nice and solid. Uh, what else can we show you? Just take a little look inside. Uh, Non-standard steering wheel. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the uh, dashboard's out. Um, we had some electrical issues with this when we got it. I put a battery on this car just to see if everything worked. I had it turning over initially and we had it firing and it started briefly. Um, but I think all the crap that was in the tank, I did put fresh fuel in it and drain it out. but. I think over the years there's been that much rust in the tank um, it actually clogged the fuel pump up it has a facet pump underneath the car and the fuel pump just wasn't pumping so that was one of the reasons for the tank coming off so once the tank is restored and back on I've got a new facet fuel pump to go on there and this car should fire up pretty easily um, we have got a little bit of mould forming on the seats that's because it's been sat outside for a, a month um, which is the reason I brought it back inside because it's not good to leave these cars outside for a length of time they, they do rust pretty quickly so again that's uh, now inside and we will dry it out and get it all cleaned up and get all this interior stripped out and the gear stick is actually running a rover um, gearbox and the bushes have perished on that so we need to get that sorted we've got some white dials in there uh, that is genuine mileage as well 54,000 miles on this we've got some aftermarket gauges fitted in there We've got a little gauge in the form of a helmet in there. Um, so yeah, it's, this thing should be pretty good when it's done. Roof lining's nice and tidy. The rest of the interior is good. Um, just want the dashboard putting back together and a right good clean and everything stripping out. Basically, all carpets out, all seats out, and uh, all wet back in and making nice again. The bonnet has had to have a bit of modification. So I'll show you now. As you'll see there, we've got a hump in the bonnet. That's actually out of a Capri, um, just to give clearance for the quad carbs. But once it's all painted up and everything, it gives the car quite a good chunky look. So I think that's going to really suit the car once it's all painted. Well, we're going to paint the bonnet. I don't know about painting the full car, but the bonnet definitely wants doing. The car does want respraying, but 
or whether we'll get that far into it or not, I'm not too sure. Um, we've got that much going on at the moment. I could just do with freeing up some, some space now, so um, I'm not really sure how far we're going to go with this one. Just depends on time frame and space, I suppose. So, yeah, that's that one. I just thought I'd give you a little look around this as to what's coming next for the channel. It is going to be this car. So, there we have it. I hope you enjoy watching the series on this restoration. I'll update you as soon as we've made some progress, or well, for the time being. We're going to be cracking on with the 400 replica, which I've just got back on its wheels. Um, and I've actually now got it over the pit, so I can start to do the fuel lines and stuff. Me roof lining for this one's just arrived, so I can start getting that in, which will then allow me to get the interior in. Um, we've just been having a big shuffle around today, clearing the workshop out. You've probably seen the videos on this. Um, I didn't have any room around the car because there was that much in the workshop, but now I can actually get all the way around this and um, start making some decent progress. We've got cars littered all over the place at the minute. So these are actually going to go into alternative storage now for temporary measure just until the uh, black one's made some decent progress and then we can start dragging these back in this is my brother's uh, 400 replica as you'll notice it's running something a little bit different this will probably be another build for the channel at a later date so I'll keep that one under wraps for now but this will be one that's coming on the channel in the near future and that one over there is my i240 which is also running a cosy engine and box I'm not entirely sure whether i'm going to keep the cosy engine and box in that one yet over there or whether i'm going to take it out and run something a little bit more simple so that's it guys i just thought i'd give you a little look around the mancona so what's coming next for the channel once we've got this one done i'll see you on the next one